Beaver fur is the oldest and was one of the most sought after furs for garments of all the wild furs. Desirable for its warmth and its beauty, either in its natural state or sheared. For hundreds of years, it has been the backbone of the fur industry. But like everything else, preferences and perceptions change. For example, today, even the most traditional full beaver coat is no longer in style. Old-time furriers of 50 years ago would be hard-pressed to even identify beaver in some of the current fashions. The good news is, since beaver fur lends itself not only to plucking and shearing, but to a whole new range of techniques from sculpting to weaving, it remains one of the most versatile of all the wild furs. Consequently, the garment designs and styles are limited only by the scope of the designer's imagination. As is the case with all fur garments, the design and manufacturing, all the way from the design sketches to the pattern making, is a highly specialized skill. Your company's studio, NAFA, is the world leader in sponsoring design and technical workshops all over the world. The creativity of students and established designers alike are challenged as they are taught the wonders of wild fur. Some of the most beautiful and unique new fashions have come from these workshops. Traditionally, Montreal has been a North American hub of the wild fur industry. A maze of small family-owned garment manufacturers supplies both Canada and the U.S. with tens of thousands of fashionable fur garments each winter season. And it all begins in the creative minds of the furriers and their book of designs. From there, it becomes a pattern, an outline for creating the panels of fur. Each garment requires its own pattern. The pattern maker must understand how each panel blends and complements the others. So now I'm going to cut the pattern. Actually, it's a pattern for a men's uh, garment. Okay, so uh, it's, this is going to be for a shilling coat. So. And I'm doing this uh, for a contractor. We don't do the shilling coat here. So basically on the, this pattern, the canvas was uh, done. Once the pattern is created and cut, it is matched to just the right pelts for that garment. Any damage to the pelts must be meticulously and seamlessly repaired. This gives a little insight into why our damaged goods are so much less valuable than good, well-handled pelts. Basically, we have to uh, repair it, okay, and if it's possible, because sometimes it's almost impossible, but this way, if I do this, I cut these holes like that, okay, and I just follow the, the pattern that, uh, so every, uh, every damage, every skin is different, but we just try to do the best we can we can to contour all these damage like that. So I take off this piece here, okay? So it's very, uh, there's a lot of holes and uh, things like that in it. There's another one in this uh, spot here. So I'm gonna do this, remove the, the bad spot. And then I have to cover this uh, space, okay? So I'm gonna do this, try to avoid uh, too many seams. So in the same seam, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do this here. And that's a lot of space to cover. And uh, usually if you do more than three quarter of an inch, it's gonna show. So I'm making a drop like that. So she's gonna move this here like this and this to this hole, okay? And this here. So let's, and I'm doing it in two, uh, two time like that and like this. Okay, now I'm gonna give it to uh, Joanne. She is going to uh, repair it. So that's what's nice about the uh, fur because we can just close all the holes like that, all the space, put it together, then we stretch the leather and we just keep it flat. So a skin like this, I'm gonna use it to make uh, some kind of jacket. It's gonna be dyed probably black and uh, we do the carving and everything is gonna disappear. You're not gonna see any uh, damage or repair on the first side.
she's using black thread on the white skin because I'm gonna dye the skin black so it doesn't matter. Otherwise, I would have just used a white thread. It's time consuming and expensive to repair the damages and often a substantial part of the pelt may be lost. Remember the investment in the pelt at this point for the manufacturer may already be three times the price he paid for the raw pelt. So every piece has value and will be used for something. Everything in the, in the box and eventually probably what is good in this is going to be sold to do something else. When you think that uh, someone is sitting at a, a fur machine and is putting all these little pieces together, it's amazing. Once the damage is repaired, it is stretched, tacked out and dried. Then it may be sent back to the dressers for drying or more shearing. When it returns, it is re-blocked and using the pattern, the fur panels are cut and fitted to match each piece of the pattern. So this is just uh, the first process of uh, preparing the skin to uh, send them out for top shearing and the dyeing. Then the sewing begins by machine and by hand. Each panel must be cut, laid out, and re-sewn to make the beaver fur blend together. So the, the skin was cut every uh, four centimeter and just move half an inch each cut to make it uh, long like this. Lastly, the finishing touches. From the new art of sculpting the sheared fur to making the garments fully reversible, all add to the beauty of beaver. This is a pretty abbreviated look at the garment making process and is only intended to give you, our shippers, some insight into the travels of your pelts beyond the fur shed. It's important that everyone involved in our industry be aware of some of the detailed steps required to keep all of us doing what we love. A great deal of that burden for appealing to the customer lies beyond what has traditionally been the scope of the trappers. And it is vitally important that we not only understand but support and work with all other segments of our industry. Our job is to supply the primest, most well-handled pelts we can produce. The job of the designers and manufacturers is to design and create innovative and unique ways to utilize our pelts and continually offer products that fascinate and excite customers about real fur, thus creating long-term demand. Innovation is the key. A great example of thinking outside the box and developing new techniques for beaver was created by Paula Lishman, who came up with a unique and fascinating way to incorporate beaver into garments that were traditionally the domain of wool. The nice thing about this fabric is that it has a lot of give to it, so it can be quite long or shorter and wider. Paula's process combines fur with a cotton cord, forming the foundation for the fur and allowing the finely cut beaver to be woven into a stunningly beautiful array of light and warm shawls, sweaters and coats. The technique was so revolutionary, she was granted a Canadian patent on the process. Paula grew up in the North and was not only familiar with the fur, but a huge supporter of its use in the fashion industry. This is, shows how we cut a pelt around and around and around from the outside edge. So if these were cut lines, you could pull it and you get a long, narrow strip. And that's how we make a yarn from a fur pelt. And then with that yarn, we can knit it, weave it. This is crocheted ring shawl. One size fits all. They're great. And they come in lots of colors, as you can see behind me. One size fits all. Every Canadian woman who spends the winter in this country deserves one of these. Call me. I'll help you out. Paula's garments require a very high quality beaver, as she explains. So the beaver that we purchase, we want to buy beaver that's prime, caught under the ice. We need that really good, high quality, full, full, full fur beaver because we're working only with the underwool, so we need it to be prime. You know, I'm, I need to get 220 grams out of a beaver pelt. That's my average, that's what I'm going for in finished yarns. Would rather buy on the larger size so that I know I have a better chance of getting that amount of yarn from a beaver. I need 
as few guard hairs as possible, which means a hand pluck process, which is a lot more labor. And I know that our, our, our processing costs are more. We're looking at, you know, in the $50 range. And even the section of the pelt has an effect on the final garment. This is a beaver pelt that's been hand plucked. So all of the guard hairs have been taken out of it, but not sheared. So you can see the back is quite, the hair is actually quite long and curly. And then the hair on the flank section, this is a traditional belly split beaver, is much thicker and also much shorter considering this hasn't been sheared at all. The bag split beaver is of course my preference at the moment because it gives me all that good fur in the middle. This is the traditional belly split beaver and the, and the traditional shape. This is how they, you know, they all come from the, from the dresser. This one's also been dyed a walnut color, but there's the head and the tail. The, the pile underneath have been back split, so they've been split up the back here. So that makes the belly in the middle, this nice big round part in the middle. And then the, my back, which this is also an ombre skin, so you can see Ombre is a beaver that's dyed without being bleached first. So ombre, of course, means shadow in French. So the difference in the color here, it's always darker on the center back. So this is the center back then of the beaver, which has the hard hairs, but the least under wool. I mean, you guys as trappers know this. This is the part of the beaver that he curls up to protect himself and he's got all the guard hairs. But when you pluck them out, the underwool is not nearly as thick as the belly because the belly is the area that's protected that keeps the beaver the warmest, has the fewest guard hairs and the densest, le you know, the densest underwool. Recently, she has been working directly with trappers so that they might fully understand the importance of handling their pelts specifically for her needs. This is a great example of how all segments of the industry should understand the needs and processes of everyone else who works with the pelts. Once the pelt has been dyed and blocked, it, it gets a, a much crisper texture, of course, than an unblocked pelt. And then this pelt will get trimmed around the outside edge. And then she just takes her knife and whatever the shape of the pieces, she cuts always from the outside edge. Draw a line an eighth of an inch from the edge. And then they do that for an hour or so, and they have a bunch of lines. Cut on the line. And then when you run out of line, just keep cutting because you're always cutting a certain distance from the edge. So it's uh, just around and around and around. And the key to her technique is the way the beaver pelts are cut in long, thin strands and then wound with a heavy cotton thread. She's cutting from the back of the leather, of course, around and around the outside edge. So the first strip then gets processed by combining it with a very strong mercerized cotton thread called a spinning yarn and it gets twisted together with that first strip to make our beaver yarn that we use to knit, weave, crochet, macrame, tie parcels with. I mean it's yarn. You can use it for a lot of different things. It's very strong. This creates a fur yarn that can be woven or knitted using a number of different techniques for a variety of different garment styles. The range of colors and styles is amazing. Paula demonstrates the versatility of just one of her creations. This one is done in a combination of honeycomb over top of weaving. So I've honeycombed the beaver and woven it with squirrel and natural muskrat. The creative process is long and tedious work involving many steps, from cutting the pelts to making the patterns, weaving and joining all the panels, almost all done by hand. Paula's innovative and stylish garments and her dedication to beaver in her designs is what keeps her and our industry on the cutting edge of fashion. That's why it is so important for our members to understand all that goes into making it possible for us to do our part as fur harvesters. We need many, many more Paula Lishmans and their innovations. NAFA and the Wild Fur Shippers Council are constantly investing in programs to stimulate that innovation in students, designers, established manufacturers, and marketers of wild fur. And together with all segments of our industry, work tirelessly to create the consumer demand for our furs.
Our future lies in that demand. From the flowage to the high fashion runways, we all must contribute to the success of our industry and lifestyle. That's the one. Very, very practical. That's, That's it? The one? That's the one. Okay. Perfect. Huh?